Now we can also do an elimination reaction that way as well. React this with proton. Gives me my protonated hydroxide. Now this water can leave in E1, SN1 type mechanism. And now the water itself can be the base that deprotonates my molecule. Now I've got a choice of which proton to take off. Remember it has to be beta to where my leaving group was. So if I take this one off, I'm going to get the more substituted product, so that'll be the one that I'll draw. So this would be your major isomer due to Zaitsev's rule. More substituted alkenes are more stable. If I want to compare these reactions, remember, primary alcohol is going to do an elimination, the slowest, versus a secondary alcohol, versus a tertiary alcohol. Tertiary alcohols are going to be the fastest. So this reaction where we do an elimination of water from this molecule is actually called a dehydration reaction. It's really just the elimination mechanisms that we saw last chapter. In this case, we're eliminating water instead of a hydrogen and a halogen. So we're losing OH off of one part of the molecule and H off the other part of the molecule. So OH and H, that's the H2O that we're going to eliminate. So let's talk a little bit about which mechanism is going to happen when. Primary alcohols, if they can do an elimination at all, are going to have to do an E2. They're not going to be very good eliminations, but it has to be an E2 because they don't make a good carbon cation. So if I'm going to draw this, now I've got a proton. My alcohol gets protonated. And my base, which in this case is HSO4 minus, is retreating this with only sulfuric acid. So HSO4 minus has to come along and deprotonate, causing the water to leave. Now you may look at this reaction and think HSO4 minus is not a very strong base to want to come in and, and deprotonate this. And while that's true, in this reaction, it's not energetically favored. And because of that, we have to try to force this reaction to occur. And one of the best ways to do that is by using Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle has a lot of uses in organic chemistry. So, for example, what Le Chatelier's principle says is that any system that's at equilibrium, if we disturb that equilibrium, the system will readjust to reestablish the equilibrium. So, what that means is that if this comes to equilibrium, even if it's mainly favoring the, the reactants, if I can remove either of my products, either the alkene or the water, It will readjust to establish equilibrium to the right, and it will force the reaction forward. And there's two ways of doing that. In this case, the alkene is going to be lower boiling than either water or the alcohol, because there's no hydrogen bonding, there's not even dipole-dipole interactions. And so we would be able to boil off the product and leave the other materials behind, and that can force this reaction forward. Another way sometimes is we'll use molecular sieves, or, which are, are little ceramic beads or balls that will absorb water, and so we can absorb water out of the reaction, and that can force the reaction forward. So there are a couple different ways that we can do that. If we have secondary or tertiary alcohols, they can follow an E1 mechanism. 
So the first thing that happens is this hydroxy gets protonated. Then water can leave to form our carbocation. Then we can either remove this proton or this proton to have our two possible products. I'll just show the one removing this one. And this is the major product because it's the most substituted. This would be the minor product. However, it turns out that we also get this product. And I would say that this is an unexpected product from what we're able to draw from the mechanism. So that means that something different has to be happening here in the middle somewhere that we don't know about. And it actually happens at the carbocation stage. So I'll redraw the carbocation. Now this is a secondary carbocation. Right? Secondary carbocations are, are more stable than primary, but tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary. So what can happen in this molecule, if this hydrogen moves over with its pair of electrons to here, leaves the positive charge behind, the new hydrogen is here now, now we get a tertiary carbocation. And the tertiary carbocation is more stable. And now if we deprotonate, we can also get a product where we deprotonate this proton with water. Leading to our unexpected product. So what can happen here is that carbocations can rearrange to become more stable. So here's a new reaction where we can treat an alcohol with phosphorus oxychloride and pyridine to eliminate and cause the alkene. So we better look at the mechanism and try and figure out what's happening in this reaction. So pyridine is just a base. It's got a lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen, and this is a base. But what about phosphorus oxychloride? So if phosphorus is in the middle, and phosphorus is right under nitrogen, so it typically makes three and five bonds. It's got an oxygen around it and three chlorines. So that means that to get all the valence electrons right, it needs to have a double bond to oxygen. So that's phosphorus oxychloride. And if we think about these bonds, there's a delta minus on oxygen, delta minus on chlorine, delta minus on chlorine, delta minus on chlorine, which means that there's a big delta plus on phosphorus. So now we bring along our alcohol molecule that has a lone pair of electrons on oxygen. So the oxygen is actually attracted to the phosphorus because the oxygen has electrons, and the phosphorus with the big delta plus on there wants electrons. And then, as in a lot of our mechanisms, halogens make great leaving groups, so one of the chlorines can leave. So here we have our intermediate. And now we're going to introduce our pyridine. So the pyridine can come in and deprotonate our protonated alcohol to make that neutral, which makes a second intermediate. And then we actually need a second equivalent of pyridine to come by and remove a proton from one of the carbons beta to the leaving group, which can cause this to leave. So what was the whole point of this? The whole point of this, phosphorus oxychloride, is just to activate alcohol to make it a good leaving group. And we get our product plus 
PO2 Cl2 minus. Now, why did we need this new way? Remember what organic chemists want to do? Organic chemists want to control everything. So if we want to convert an alcohol into an alkene, we have one way that's acidic. And we have one way that's basic. So when you're doing synthesis, there are going to be other groups on your molecule at times, and some of them maybe will react with an acid if you put an acid in, so we have to use a basic method to make our alkene. Other times you might have something on your molecule that would react with base, and so we have to have an acidic method for turning an alcohol into an alkene.